The term network or networking can bring a variety of different things to mind, including the networking we do at different work events where we're just, you know, chatting with other people or, or talking about work, but we're connecting with other people that we may work with professionally, uh, or we may think of networks like uh, online, like social media networks, like LinkedIn or something like that. And the truth is that we're all connected in some way. Every one of us is part of a variety of different networks and have uh, network connections, whether we realize it or not, in a variety of different phases of our lives. So the same is true for work, uh, no less than anywhere else. We have networks at, at uh, work that we would call communication networks. And so that's what we're going to focus on in this particular video. What are communication networks, both formal and informal, and how do we go about analyzing and examining those things in a sort of uh, social scientific way? So let's start with the discussion of formal communication networks, which is organizational communication that exists within the rules and norms established by an organization. So these are uh, generally uh, widely recognized. They, they are formalized and codified within an organization, typically follow some sort of hierarchical structure and may involve process as well as just the flow of information may involve the process. What's the proper uh, process for communicating with other people in the organization. Those are formal communication networks. We tend to think of formal communications in a sense of directionality. So we have downward communication, upward communication, and then horizontal and lateral communication. Uh, so we think of it directionally and, and we break it down along these lines, generally speaking. So we take a look at each one. Downward communication starts at the top of an organization or at a higher point in the hierarchical structure and then flows downward, as the name would suggest, right? It flows downward to people below that level in the hierarchical structure. Uh, this uh, takes on a, a, a more formal tone in terms of directions and uh, commands than it would in some other uh, directional flows, as we'll see. But typically, an order received from a pie that is part of downward communication is received as instruction or order or command and has that kind of tone to it. Upward communication then flows the opposite direction. It comes from a lower place in the hierarchical structure and moves upward through the chain of command. Um, this takes on a different tone, as you would imagine. Typically, subordinates are not giving commands or directives to the people who uh, oversee them to their supervisors, right? So upward communication takes on less of a commanding tone and more of a, you know, I have an idea or something you may want to be aware of and so forth that makes its way up to the appropriate level of the hierarchical structure then. But upward communication starts at a lower point in the hierarchical structure and moves its way upward. As you may suspect, horizontal or lateral communication is communication that occurs at roughly the same level of an organizational structure, of that hierarchical structure, um, typically between people who are colleagues who are at you know, approximately the same level of influence or power within that organization. Um, it could be between departments. It could be within a department. Um, but typically, we think of communication here that, that exists at the same level of an organization, between two people at the same level of an organization. So again, the tone here is a little bit different. It's really not commanding. We're not giving orders to people who are at the same level as us usually. Um, but we're also not quite as deferential as we would be if it were upward communication. Horizontal communication tends to take on a more even or neutral tone. Um, and so uh, this is the communication that occurs between people who, again, are at the same rough level of hierarchical status and power and influence within an organization. So this summarizes the formal communication networks, the downward, upward, and horizontal communication that, that are the formal, established, codified methods of communication and networks of communication within an organization. But there also exist a, a number of informal communication networks that aren't as uh, structured, that aren't necessarily as uh, explicit as formal communication networks. So let's take a look at what some of those informal communication networks are, because oftentimes uh, the vast majority of communication within an organization will take place within one of these informal communication networks rather than the formal chain of command communication network. So we can start with what we call uh, a type of communication network that is what we call single strand. Right? Single strand is just one person sharing information with another person. So one person to the next, like a relay race, then that second person may share it with a third and the third may share it with a fourth and so forth. But it's one person sharing information with one other person in that single strand. We also have what we call gossip. 
which is one person transmitting a message directly to a number of other people. So think of this like uh, somebody standing at the water cooler at work or standing in the break room at work. And every person that comes in, this person then shares that information with that other person. So, so one person is the source of this information. But it may be going to three, four, 20 other people, depending on how many people they come across, right? But gossip starts with one person, and then that person transmits that number directly to a number of other people. Another type of informal communication network is what we call probability. In probability, one person sends a message to a random selection of others who then themselves transmit it to a random group of others. And then it proceeds like that throughout the, the organization. So think of it like chain mail or a uh, spam message, uh, you know, via email or something like that, where, um, again, it starts with one person who gets, it gets shared to a couple others. And then those people share it with others and those people share it with others. And, and it grows exponentially from there. So probability, at the, is not one person sharing with all the other people, one person sharing with a group of people, and then those people share it with others. And but it's a random um, procedure. There's not a not a structured way that that information is is transmitted throughout the group. Uh, if that were the case, then we, it would be closer to what we call a cluster communication network, informal communication network called a cluster. Here you have one source sending a message to a pre-selected and identified group of people who then do the same and sharing it with a group of people or a, a few people in the same kind of systematic way. Think of this like a phone tree, right? The phone tree starts with one person, you know, the office is going to be closed today for bad weather. So one person starts the phone tree, they call three people, right? Then those three people call three people themselves. And now you've got nine people involved and now you've got, you know, so it proceeds, but that's planned and structured. And, and so we know how that information progresses through the, the cluster type of network then. So you have informal communication that takes place in all of these different ways. And so it could be any one of these um, types or, or some combination of these informal communication networks that really play a large part in how things are communicated in any given workplace. So the question then becomes, how do we go about analyzing this as, as, as an area of study and as an area of improvement? How do we go about conducting an, a network analysis, communication network analysis within an organization? And so quite simply, a network analysis, communication network analysis is very simply an attempt to determine both the formal and informal communication networks that exist within an organization and between the organization and its external environment. It's, it's not just what happens within the organization. It's also how that organization is connected to the external environment and bear in mind it's going to take into account both the formal and informal communication networks within that organization because both are very very important we know that there are different types of network activities or in other words different things that happen within those communication networks, different functions that are performed as a result of those communication networks, including things like an exchange of affect, which would be an exchange involving some expression of liking or friendship, as well as an exchange of influence and power or an exchange of information or exchange of goods and services. These are all things that are conducted through the different types of network activities, whether formal or informal. So when we're thinking about how to examine those things and really study them and get a handle on what the communication networks are and what those functions are within an organization. There are a few things that we need to consider and, and we need to measure. So when we're analyzing communication networks, we're going to measure uh, things like the measurement of ties that exist. Right? So, and the measures assigned to individual actors and the measures assigned to networks. These are things that um, were presented by Daniel Brass in 1995, this framework of three categories of analyzing these aspects of communication networks, the measurement of ties, measures assigned to individual actors and those assigned to the networks. So let's examine the components of each of these. We'll begin with the measurement of ties, uh, the measurement of ties, the measurement of the things that connect the, uh, the individuals involved, the individual actors within that network. So we start with the idea of indirect links. In other words, measuring what are the tr transitory connections between people separated by links in the chains? How many links are there in between various actors within this network? We also will measure frequency. How often do these actors communicate with one another? 
we'll look at stability. How long has that as that connection existed? How, is it something relatively new or is it something that's been in place for a number of years now? We'll examine the multiplexity or in other words, how many different links both inside and outside of the organization does that, does that actor have, or do those, those individuals have? We'll examine the strength of those connections, the amount of time, emotional intensity, intimacy, or reciprocal services pr present in, the, in those connections. We'll explore the direction or the flow of that communication as we talked about uh, earlier. Is it upward, primarily upward or downward or horizontal lateral communication uh, within this network? We'll also examine the symmetry. Is this a balanced system or is it mostly one sided is, is one or more actors getting more out of this than the others involved in that network. Another way that we measure the impact and assess the role of, of communication networks in an organization is to measure uh, things that are assigned to individual actors. So we look at things here like the degree, the number of direct links that an individual has with other people within the network. We'll look at range and the diversity of those links, the different groups, departments, levels of hierarchy, et cetera, that are involved in the connections that that individual has. We look at the closeness for that individual actor, the degrees of separation that exist within that network for that individual. We look at betweenness, the extent to which someone mediates or falls between two other people in their network and the role that they play in that regard. We look at their centrality, the extent to which an individual is the core of a network. Are they the central hub of the network or are they, or are they more of an outer uh, spoke in that network? We'll examine the prestige or the degree to which people want to be a part of that network. In other words, the cool factor, the it factor involved with that network and assigned to that individual. And then finally, what are that person's roles within that uh, organization? The final category that we'll look at here is measures assigned to the network itself. We start here with things like size. In other words, the total number of actors involved in that network, how many people are a part of that network. We look at the inclusiveness or the level of connectedness within that, or within that network. Component is another area of measurement. In other words, the largest subset of actors with multiple links in that network. The reachability or the degrees of separation that exist within a network and the overall connectedness that exists within that network as well. How close are those connections? We'll also look at things like density, the links that exist within a communication network compared to the total number of links possible within a communication network. Centralization or the comparing of links of an individual star of the network to the rest of the people in that network. We'll measure symmetry where we compare the symmetrical ties as opposed to the directional ties within that network. And the transitivity, the number of transitive triples divided by the number of potential transitive triples that exist within that network. As you can imagine and hopefully see here, networks can be quite complicated, but they're also fairly straightforward to understand. If we understand that again, everything within an organization is systemic in nature, it is based in a system and every system has a network within it of ways that it's connected. And here in particular, we're talking about the ways that people are connected through communication. If you have questions about communication networks or about the analysis of these things, please don't hesitate to send me an email. I'd love to hear from you there. In the meantime, I hope that you will begin to see organizations differently and begin to be able to recognize and identify the networks within an organization and the important role that these networks play in the overall effectiveness and success of that organization.